In this tutorial we're going to learn to build interactive content in Articulate Storyline using state changes and triggers. So when you think about interactive content in a general sense, you have three types of interactivity. You've got clicking, mouse over, and dragging. And a lot of times those are somewhat interchangeable. So let's look at this example. So I have three examples. They're all the same content and generally the same layout. So we can pretend this was some sort of decision making interaction. And I need you to make a decision. And then this type of interactivity is going to be based on a click. So I can click and get my information. Now this is the exact same interaction, but instead of clicking, I'm doing a mouse over. And then this is the exact same interaction, and instead of doing a click or a mouse over, I'm doing a dragging activity. Now, dragging is a little bit different because you generally have two things. You have a draggable object and you have a place where it needs to go or a target. So in this case, we've got our draggable object and the target. And so I can move those around. So you can see the activity was exactly the same, the content was the same, but how I chose to interact with the screen is a little bit different. So when you build interactive e-learning, you have those three core types of interactions and then it's just a matter of figuring out which type of interaction works best with what you're trying to do. Now let's do a quick overview of the slide area and then we'll do an activity where we work with state changes and triggers. If we look at a slide, you're going to have your slide area here where you add content. Then down here you have your timeline and then you have your states panel. And over here you have your slide layers. And slide layer is a way for you to show information or hide information. So you can see I can change the information I show. And up here you have a triggers panel. In Storyline we use a triggers wizard. So what you do is kind of talk through the triggers. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? And one last thing is we'll look at the states tab. When we look at the states tab and we select an object, you can see in this case this object has multiple states. And so and I can create this sense of interactivity on this button by going from a normal hover to down state. So let's look at the activity now. We're going to do a state change interaction. We're going to create a shape with two states. And then the first one will click on it to change the state. The second one will do a mouse over to change the state. And the third one will do a drag action to change the state. And then I've got a couple of other states that we can look at, the visited and hover state. Let's create our first shape. So we'll insert a rectangle. Whenever you add objects to the screen in Storyline, you should title those. So we'll come to the timeline. We're going to call this rectangle click just so we know what it's for. And what we want to do here is create two states. So when we click on the rectangle, we go to the states tab. We can see it starts with a normal state. So normal state is just what it is. What we want to do is create a new state that's orange. So we'll keep it simple. We'll just hit Edit States, create a new state, and we'll just type in orange and hit Add. So now we have a normal state and an orange state. Now they look the same, so I need to customize the orange state. So I make sure I click on it. When I come up here, I can see my shape. So I'm going to go to Format and I'm just going to make it orange. So we have a normal state and an orange state. One thing I'll point out about the different states here when you're working with them, you're not confined to the shape. So I can insert additional content on the slide and that becomes part of my state. So if I hit Done Editing State and let's say I had a trigger, you could see how when it changes the state, how it incorporates those other objects. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So we've got a normal state and an orange state. Let's hit Done Editing States. Now we need to have a reason why we go from one state to the next. So we need a trigger. We'll create a new trigger. And I always talk through the triggers. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? So we're going to do change the state of, that's up here, that's up here in the common area. So change the state of. Choose our object, so change the state of click. So that's why we title it because it's much easier to find. So change the state of click to orange when the user clicks on click. We hit OK. 
What we should have is an interaction that when I click on this, it's going to change to orange. So let's preview the slide. Click and it changed to orange. So that interaction worked. Now let's do the exact same thing, only instead of clicking, we're going to do a mouse over. So let's insert a new shape. So we'll go to Insert, insert a triangle this time. We have a triangle. I'm going to show you a shortcut since we just want this to have an orange state as well. I'm going to select this one that has an orange state. I'm going to go to Home, Format Painter, and apply that to the triangle. And now I can see the triangle has the format as well. So now what we want to do is add a trigger to this. So let's go ahead and add a trigger. Change the state of, oh, we didn't title it. Let's get out of here because it's just a good habit to get into. So triangle, we'll call that mouse over. So this way we know what it is. So now we're going to go to change the state of mouse over to orange when mouse is hovered over and we need to find an object, the mouse over. So change the state of mouse over to orange when the mouse is hovered over, mouse over. Now this restore mouse on leave, that means when I hover my mouse over, it changes. When I move my mouse away, it goes back to its normal state. And as you can see, I can select it or deselect it. So now we should have two interactions, a click interaction and a mouse over interaction. Let's preview this. Click, mouse over. All right, now we're going to create the same interaction, but we're going to do a drag trigger. So let's close this. Insert a new shape, just insert an oval, and we'll do the same format painter. So home format painter to the oval. And now what we want to do is add a trigger. Now draggable objects are a little bit different because generally you have two components, the drag and the target. So I want to make an object draggable, and I usually have to have a place or a reason why I'm dragging it. Normally there's a target or some some place where you're dragging it to. So let's go ahead and create a target. We'll just insert a box here. So let's insert another shape and we'll make it a little bit bigger. So we've got the shape. We're going to put it here. Now let's title these. So we come to Timeline. This right here is going to be called Target just because it's easy to find it when we're looking for it. And this right here we will call Drag. All right. So let's change this so it's a little bit different in color. Let's uh, format it. We'll make it gray. So we've got an object here and we want to make this draggable and drop it on the target and then we want to change the state of this object when we do that. So what do I want to do? Change the state of that object when, when I drag it over the gray box there. So click on your trigger. What do you want to do? Change the state of. Choose your object, in this case drag, to orange when an object is dropped on, or you can do dragged over, but we'll just do dropped on. And now we have to choose our object. Now this is where you need to pay attention because a lot of times when I do my workshops, people get these two mixed up. So they're, they're switching them around. So you want to determine which object is draggable. So we're going to say the drag object is draggable, so that oval. And where can it be dropped? Now you can see you can select a number of targets. So if you want to build a really cool interaction, we're just going to select this one that says target. Hit OK. Now it's changed the state of that oval to orange when the user drops a shape, in this case this shape, on that rectangle. So let's go ahead and preview this. Click interaction, mouse over interaction, dragging interaction, and everything worked. Now I want to show you two other things about states because these are kind of common, the hover state and the visited state. So we're going to insert a smiley shape. So let's go to Insert, Shape, choose our smiley guy. And what we want to do is have a hover effect. So we're going to create a new state. We're going to call this one hover. So just create a new state and just start to type in hover. Hit Add. Now we have a hover state. 
Now we need to make it look different. So let's just go to Format and we'll turn it green and hit Done Editing. So let's preview this. Mouse over, hover. Mouse over, hover. What's cool about the hover state is we didn't have to build a trigger. We just know whenever I make a state that's hover, it's that's the way it's going to work. It's just going to be a mouse over effect. So it makes it a lot easier to build those states. I'm going to show you the visited state because that's something that's commonly used in your courses. I'm going to insert three buttons. So I'm going to insert, come up to controls, we'll just insert a button here and we'll just make them real small. So I've got three buttons and I'll duplicate them by just clicking and dragging them with the control key. So if you notice when I click on a button, buttons have pre-built states. So that's another thing that's already done for you in Storyline. Now if I go to Edit States, you can see there's a visited state. I'm going to click on that. and I'm just going to make the visited state orange. I'm going to hit Done Editing States. Then I'm going to apply that to all of those. So I'm going to double click on Format Painter and apply it to those. So now what these have are visited states. So the idea with the visited state is that when I click on an object and if it has a visited state, I know that that object has been visited. So let's preview this to see how it looks. Click and it shows me that it's been visited. Now I can tell what's been visited. I didn't have to do any programming. It's just all built in there for me. Hover, mouse over, click, drag. All those interactions, all easy to build. Now it's just a matter of you going through the activity, building some objects, changing the states, and then creating triggers to change the state from one to the next.